Hey, I have a new project to share today, and I learned a couple things in doing this. I really have been enjoying using a lot of digital elements recently. They are fabulous even for traditional scrappers. There are so many choices out there, and you don't have to wait for the mail to come for any embellishments or go to the drive to the scrapbook store. You can make them right here yourself. And the Project Life um, elements are super popular, but they really lend themselves beautifully to, I think, any type of project, including a 12 by 12 scrapbook page, which is what I'm working on right now. So I started this project using um, Silhouette Studio, and I just made myself my own sketch. And then one by one, I slowly filled in the elements and added the titles until my layout was complete. But I learned a couple things that I want to share with you today, and one of them is tracing and putting the elements into the page. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a element from Studio Double D at uh, Digital at Designer Digitals. It's one of my favorite online uh, digital stores, and I'll put a link for you on the bottom of the page. But I want to talk about um, tracing because there are a couple issues that came up. So let me go ahead and open my trace window. I'm going to select the uh, trace area function and go ahead and shut off my high pass filter and bring my threshold all the way up to 100% and trace the outer edge. So what you can see from this element, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, is that we have kind of a grungy distressed border the way we pick this up. and that's fine if that's the way you cut it, but I want to have a nice clean line on my cut. So I'm going to get rid of this cut line and show you another way to do that. And I'm going to go over here to the draw a rounded rectangle function. And you have these um, light gray uh, crosshairs that show when you're going to pull a rectangle. So what I do is I line them up top and bottom as best you can. You can always adjust it. And then I click it and I pull. And what happens is the ratios are just about perfect. And that's it's really that simple. If I check my cut lines right there, I can see my outline. And that's generally the way that I like to do it where I have a situation where the lines aren't as cl clean. But there's one other way to do it that I want to show you. So let me get rid of this trace. trace this get rid of this element, move that out of the way. And then I'm going to take my same trace line, because that's the size that I need that's going to fit into my layout, and I'm going to activate the size uh, rectangle, and I'm going to go ahead and, and click on that, and it jumps right in there. And if you work the way I do, when you do your sketch first, and you need particular sizes, that works really, really well. So I wanted to share that hint with you. The next quick tip that I want to share with you is putting photos into your layout. And you can see here in my design that what I did was, again, I did the whole design first, drew all the rectangles. They weren't filled. They were all just plain um, squares and rectangles like I normally do. But a lot of times when I go at the very end to put in my photos, I have to crop my photos to be the exact size that I need. So normally when I'm doing my sketch, I end up with something like this. So I've got the size rectangle I need. I'm going to go ahead and just fill that with white so you can just see what I normally end up with. So I've got to fill these white areas or empty spaces with my photo. So I'm going to move this out of the way since that's the size that I need. And I'm going to make this transparent again because that's going to help me in what I'm going to show you. And move this to the center so I can work on it. And now I want to go ahead, I know the size photo that I need for my layout. I'm going to go ahead and open up my photo, file, and remember to do merge because you want it to be opened on the same page project that you're working on. And I'm going to let me make this a little smaller. So it's in my field of view here. I'm going to go ahead and change the bottom so I can see every file that's in my photo folder. And I'm going to go ahead and double click on the photo. And as you can see, it opens really large. But don't worry about that. I'm going to go up to Object. And I'm going to open up my Scale um, window, 
which is hidden under here somewhere. Yep. And I'm going to lock my aspect ratio. I know that this photo is about three inches, so I'm going to go ahead and dial in that number and click apply. And that takes my photo down to approximately the size that I need. Let me zoom in again here so you can see what I'm working on. So here's my photo of my daughter. And I want to go ahead and crop this to be this size. So I'm going to make it slightly larger. I'm going to send this to the back so that I have this outline that I need right in front. I'm going to put this down exactly where I like it. I want that little shoe to show. And I can pull this in a little bit smaller and use my arrow keys to line this up how I want to line it up. And then I'm going to keep that selection on the red outline, which is my cut file. And in addition to that, I'm going to activate the picture. And then I'm going to go up to Object, Modify, Crop. And what I end up with is a photo that is perfectly sized to what I need. Then all I have to do is trace it and pop it into my layout. And now I have exactly the size that I need for for my design. And that's it. Just a couple of quick tips to show you how to work with digital elements. They're really fun to work with if you haven't worked with them in the past. And that's it. Thanks for watching.